For our learning together today, I wanted to share a story. Uh, it's a classic book that, um, for, for kids, I think it's, it's all about our relationship with God. It's all about how we know God and how we know that God is in our lives and uh, how sometimes we don't always see it or we don't necessarily see it as a good thing because it's not the way we want things to go. But God is always there, always there for us to, like, to the ends of the universe. God is there. And for adults, it's a good story for adults too because I think it... Uh, it, well, it illuminates some theological and Christological concepts that are the key foundation stones of our faith traditions and our creeds. It's called Mars Needs Moms. Please watch this. Mars Needs Moms by Berkeley Breed. Mothers, Milo often wondered what was so special about them. Anyone could see that they were giant summer-stealing child work and perfumey garden goblins. There was hardly much special about that. Mothers were also bellowing broccoli bullies and carrot-cuddling cuckoos. Nothing very special about that, thought Milo. Mothers were slave-driving, trash-mashing, rubbish odor ogres. Nothing special about that. And mothers were thundering, humorless tyrants. This afternoon, Milo's mother missed what was funny about sister-tinting. Up to bed now, she thundered. Tyrant, barked Milo. No supper, said his mother. As she left his room, Milo yelled, I sure don't see what's so special about mothers. She paused when he said this and then closed the door very, very slowly. Exhausted from his fit, Milo fell very, very asleep. Milo slept so deeply that he never heard the distant roar of rocket engines in the night sky beyond his window. He never saw the tongue of orange flames light up the nearby hills. The spaceship landed just outside of town. They'd arrived. But who? Martian raiders. Worse, Martian raiders with a big net. They climbed down from their starship and gazed over the town below, looking for that most marvelous treasure. Treasure that could never, ever be found on Mars. A treasure called Moms. Ooh, they thought, to nab just one of those. Any mother would do. They don't have mothers on Mars, you know. Martians grow motherless from the ground, just like potatoes. The raiders had some early mom-nabbing trouble. Bolder action would be needed. Milo awoke to strange sounds down the hall. He peeked around the door to see his mother being carried past the ba bathroom by three Martians the color of jelly beans. That, he thought, is something you don't see every day. Milo chased the Martian raiders and their now awake prize out of the house and down the streets and into the hills and up to the spaceship which roared into the night sky. Milo suddenly wondered why he would want to be dangling miles above Earth, chasing his carrot-cuddling mother. 
He decided to figure it out later. Milo found himself locked in the bottom of the spaceship, so he put on a spare space helmet and curled up in a corner, trying to stay warm. He slept as the ship sped towards the distant red planet. Milo awoke to find the ship still and quiet. The door was open, and suddenly he knew why Mars so badly needed mothers. They needed driving to soccer, and to ballet, and to play dates, parks, and pizzas, plus cooking and cleaning and dressing and packing lunches and bandaging boo-boos. They'd seen it in their telescopes. It was obvious. Mars needed moms. How perfectly, completely sensible of them, thought Milo. And he decided to go tell them just that. But he tripped. Down, down, down he went, landing very hard, but at least in one piece. His helmet, not so much. Milo gasped, and he choked. As anyone knows, breathing Martian air is like breathing mustard. He sucked it in and instantly grew weak and dizzy, and things began to go dark. Milo was fading. He barely sensed someone approaching. And he barely sensed the gentle hands place her own helmet over his head. Milo opened his eyes, and for the first time, he saw neither a broccoli bully nor a slave-driving garden ogre. He didn't see a tyrant or a dictator or a weary driver to soccer games. Suddenly, he knew what was special about mothers. She looked at him, smiling, and said, I'll love you to the ends of the universe. And then she breathed in the terrible air, closed her eyes, and leaned on Milo, growing very still. The Martians watched, unmoving, confused. Help her, he yelled angrily. And then he said, she's my mother. Finally, the mighty mom nabbers of Mars understood. Their wonderful telescopes had seen many things about mothers down on Earth, but like certain little boys, they'd missed the best part. The Martians quickly fetched another helmet and hoped that it wasn't too late. They helped Milo carry his mom aboard the ship, which lifted off for the long journey home. Her eyes remained closed as they soared through the stars. Milo would stay curled close to her all night. And he would be there when she woke up in the morning. The end.